When you're talking about building a relationship, it's interesting. You've been known as an unbelievable recruiter back for the days over at, at Georgia. But when it comes down to it, it's kind of a handwritten touch. And there was a, a one of the high schools there was talking about they always receive thank you cards from coaches, but normally from one coach. Is it true that your whole staff writes these thank you cards? <laughs> Well, we have 37 people in our staff meeting every morning at 7.30. And it is true that um, we write five notes a day, each person in there. And, uh, you know, there's powerful in a handwritten note. And people will read a handwritten written note more than they would even uh, a text or something of that nature, email. So we do it. It's just part of who we are. And we enjoy it. When you look at that, I look at what Kirby has built over in, in Athens, and it's about a $700 trillion recruiting budget, right? Everybody wants to have that. But when you go to a 100-yard check and say, hey, I want to change these things. I want to be the head coach in Fayetteville. I want, to, I want to win the West. What are you asking him for to help bridge that gap? Well, right now, you know, everything that I've asked for, he's been able to give to me. You know, we, I wanted a budget so I could hire good recruiters. And, and he gave that to me. Uh, uh, planes, uh, we have access to two planes here, and, and so that's not a problem getting uh, uh, fast to different places we need to go at any point in time. And so those are the two things that really are the biggest uh, situation in recruiting is can you get there and do you have the people when you land to, to land recruits? And so those two things he gave me, and right now that, that really, uh, worked out well for us. Yeah, and I think that's why Razorback fans are so fired up to see a top 30 class after such a, a, a quick turnaround. Um, we asked this question on the Paul Feinbaum Twitter account earlier today. When you're recruiting a kid, are you telling him, I want you to come play for Sam Pittman, or I want you to go to the University of Arkansas? What should a kid actually be committing to, the school or the coach? Well, he has to like the coach, but he needs to commit to the school. And in our case, we try to sell the state. You know, we try to sell that we're different because we have no pro teams here. And, and uh, we're, you know, we have Arkansas State, but we're, we're the Power Five school, the SEC school in the state. And so uh, we're trying to sell all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is we're, we're saying come play for the state of Arkansas. It's just different. And when they come here and they see a basketball game or something like that, they'll see a, well, we hope and we think a different passion from our fans than they might elsewhere. I was going to say Bud Walton Arena. You go to Bomb Stadium and watch David yeah. Horn's baseball team. I mean, it's absolutely. And even Courtney Dyfel, the way she's done softball right now, has been, it, been great. Mike Neighbors as well, too. Hell, Sam, y'all just got it rolling in Fayetteville. <laughs> You're the next guy, right? Well, we sure, we sure hope so. We think so. Uh, but you're right. Our other programs are doing so, so well. And uh, we just got out of a head coaches meeting today. And to sit around with all the quality coaches that I was able to be with today was uh, really impressive. And they all have, they're all doing really well. Um, when you look at this, one of the kids that was a, a big name, Malik Horn Hornsby coming in, uh, and that was kind of maybe the highlight guy. Yeah. Uh, what do we know about him and how well do you think he can fit into what you want to do offensively? Well, I think he fits in perfect with what Kendall, with what Coach Browse wants to do. and. And, you know, a ride and decide type guy, a dual threat runner and thrower. He's got, got a cannon for an arm. He, you know, he obviously ran 10.7 or a little faster in track. So, you know, he's exactly what we were looking for uh, in our recruiting and for our offense. And, um, you know, we're just really ecstatic that we were able to get him. What's another name that we're going to be talking about on Saturdays here in the SEC? I know you got a bevy of different kids, but who, who's, who do you think can stand out offensively? Offensively, you know, I really like our, our offensive linemen that we got, Marcus Henderson and, and Ray Curry Jr. And, and uh, so we, I, was, I was proud of the guys, that, and of course Jalen St. John, excuse me. Uh, I was proud of those guys. You know, I think SEC is one in the trenches, and we needed to go out and get bigger. And, and we did there. So I think you'll, you'll, you'll see an improvement there on the O-line. And, and then, of course, uh, you know, we, Felipe Franks is a guy that's proven that he could, that he's done it in the SEC, and we're excited, really very, very excited about him. Well, you go back in Felipe, obviously, transferring over from Florida. How do you have that conversation when he comes in and also, hey, we're going to go after Malik and we're going to go after recruits? What's that relationship like, and how do you manage that? 
Well, if you're going to go in the grad transfer portal, the number one thing, you don't want a guy to be worried about a freshman that's coming in. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you want a guy that has that kind of confidence that, look, this is going to be my team. Now, he's going to have to earn it just like everybody else does. But you want that confidence and, hey, I've done this before. I can come. I can help this football team. And I embrace that. And uh, that's what he did. All right, uh, enough football questions. I want to know more about you, the head coach. So yeah. you got you got some new digs, I understand. You, uh, did you just get a new home there in Fayetteville. <laughs> what is that all about? I, but that's a big deal, right? I guess. I guess. Did you purchase Mike Anderson's home there in, in that area? Uh, well, I guess I did because it was on every TV station down <laughs> here. But. Uh, is, is that kind of crazy, though? Because I'm going to get into these Vegas trip rankings in a little bit. But when you look at that, that that all of a sudden you're on the spotlight, right? You're now a spotlight guy that people want, want to know about, you know, whose house you buy and where you're at on these Vegas trip rankings. I, I got you as high as number five on my Las Vegas trip rankings, Coach. Is I, that is that fair? No, I, I don't think so. I think you got me a little lower. Once you get to know me, I think you'll move me up a couple of notches. Oh, so you think you should be high? I got Lane Kiffin coming at one. I mean, listen, I felt like he well, was untouchable for right. Lane, right? But That you, makes sense. You, I mean, I have to give you that one. So you're saying you should be over Derek Mason, Mark Stoops, Dan Mullen. You should be higher than five? Well, I just feel like once you get to know me that you'd, you'd run me up that ladder a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with that being said, if you're going and you're spending 48 hours in Vegas and you're yeah. only able to take one other SEC coach, who are you calling and saying, all right, 48 hours in Vegas, let's go? Well, I just worked for Kirby. I think I'd, t I'd ask Kirby if he'd like to go out there and, <laughs> and hang out with me. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.